welcome back to another episode of the Red Cell series. In this episode, we will be introducing anemia, and in the next few episodes, we will be discussing the different types of anemia in very simple logical terms. Now, anemia is a very important topic. You'll encounter many, many patients with anemia. So it's important that you have a firm understanding of the need-to-know principles and facts. So let's get to it. Anemia is defined as a reduced absolute volume in circulating red blood cells. So there is reduction in red cell mass. Remember that red blood cells are mainly responsible for delivering oxygen to tissues. So if there is a reduction in the red cells, then the red cells are unable to meet the body's physiological and metabolic demands. So patients present with symptoms and signs of hypoxia. So when you're asked about the general features of anemia, just think of the clinical features you might expect to see in a patient presenting with hypoxia. Now, most commonly patients are asymptomatic, meaning they don't present with any symptoms, but they have a clinical diagnosis of anemia based on the indices that we shall see later. Now, the reason why patients are usually asymptomatic is because of the slowly and gradually falling hemoglobin levels gives time for the body to adjust and compensate. This includes hemodynamic compensations, as well as enhancement of the oxygen carrying capacity of hemoglobin. Examples of this includes a rise in the 2,3-BPG, causing a right shift in the oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve. If there is an increase in the 2,3-BPG, then oxygen is more readily delivered to the tissues. And we have spoken about the 2,3-BPG and the oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve in the previous episodes. So patients are asymptomatic if blood loss is slow and gradual. However, if blood loss is more rapid, such as a gastrointestinal bleed or an acute bleed, then symptoms can present. So let's go through these. General features include weakness, fatigue, and lethargy. This is because less oxygen is delivered to the tissue and thus less energy is generated. The patient's skin and conjunctiva might be pale and this is because of a reduced red cell mass. In terms of the central nervous system, the patient might feel dizzy, lightheaded or faint and this is due to hypoxia. Patients might also present with dyspnea or shortness of breath this is because they cannot catch their breath to oxygenate more blood. This is particularly seen on exertion. Unless it is in very severe anemia, then it might be seen at rest. Now, in some cases, patients might present with angina. Angina is chest pain on exertion. This is more common in patients with underlying coronary artery disease. So CAD. Patients might also present with palpitations tachycardia. The reason why they might present with tachycardia is because the heart is trying to pump faster to meet the body's metabolic demands. And on auscultation, you might hear a systolic flow murmur. This is a benign innocent murmur that results from increased blood flow and thus turbulence due to increased cardiac output as the heart tries to compensate. Now this murmur might also be heard in pregnant women. And again, this is because the heart is trying to increase its cardiac output to meet the metabolic demands. Patients might also present with intermittent claudication, and this is due to hypoxia, and is more common in patients with peripheral vascular disease. Now we shall discuss specific signs and symptoms in the various different types of anemia, but this is just an overview of the general clinical features. In an ideal world, making a diagnosis of anemia would require us to measure the red cell mass. However, this is difficult, so we use proxies. Most commonly, we use the hemoglobin concentration and the hematocrit level. And out of the two, we use hemoglobin to define anemia. So in females, anemia is defined as less than 120 grams per liter or less than 12 grams per deciliter. And in males, this is less than 140 grams per liter or less than 14 grams per deciliter. 
Now in females, this is lower because females lose some blood during the menstrual cycle, so their hemoglobin might be slightly lower, and this is normal. Now we can also use other investigations to elucidate the etiology of anemia, and we've spoken about what some of these are in the red cell indices episode. These include the red blood cell count, the mean corpuscular volume, the mean corpuscular hemoglobin, and blood film. Now the blood reticulocyte count can be used to indicate bone marrow activity. Hemoglobin electrophoresis can be used to determine what type of hemoglobin is present and hematinics are measured in specific causes of anemia. And we'll come to appreciate these as we discuss the different anemias as well as many other investigations. Now the proxies are sometimes unreliable. And what I mean by this is that they could show an apparent anemia or a polycythemia. So let's take a look at some examples. So if you pause the video here and for each of these, try to guess what the hemoglobin, the red cell volume and the plasma volume will be. Now in acute blood loss, if you measure hemoglobin, this would be normal, despite the patient losing a lot of blood and thus a lot of hemoglobin. The reason for this is because not enough time was given for change. However, the red cell volume would be decreased as well as the plasma volume, again, because the patient is losing blood. Now in pregnancy, there is increased red cell volume and increased plasma volume. Remember in pregnancy, blood volume increases significantly within the first few weeks of gestation and increases progressively throughout pregnancy. So the total blood volume increases and this varies between 20 to 100% above pre-pregnancy blood volume levels. Now in addition to plasma volume expansion, there is an increase in red cell production in fact, there is up to 40% increase in erythropoiesis. However, the hemoglobin would be low. And the reason for this is that the hemoglobin is diluted in the increased plasma volume expansion. In fact, a diagnosis of anemia in pregnancy is when hemoglobin is less than 110 grams per litre. So in pregnancy, you would see a lower hemoglobin due to the increased plasma volume. And we'll talk more about this in our obstetric series. Dehydration can result in an apparent polycythemia, where there is reduced plasma volume, the red cell volume would be normal, but the hemoglobin would be raised. So again, in dehydration, we have low plasma volume because we're losing the fluid, the red cell volume would be normal because there isn't an increase in erythropoiesis and there isn't a loss of red cells. However, the hemoglobin would be raised and this is apparent or relative, relative to the plasma volume. So the concentration of hemoglobin would appear higher because there is a reduced plasma volume. Now polycythemia, poly means many, scythe means cells and emia means blood. This is also known as erythrocytosis. So erythro means red cells and cytosis means lots of cells. So there is a lot of red cells. Now there are many causes of true polycythemia. These can be divided into primary, congenital and secondary. Primary causes include polycythemia vera, which we will discuss in the hematological malignancy series. Congenital causes include a mutation on the EPO receptor high oxygen affinity hemoglobin, and a condition known as Tuvash polycythemia, which is an autosomal recessive disorder resulting from a mutation on the VHL gene and affecting the hypoxia sensory pathway. And we've spoken about this pathway in the erythropoiesis episode. Secondary causes include an appropriate increase in EPO, such as hypoxia and living in high altitude, or an inappropriate increase in EPO, such as red cell carcinoma or exogenous administration. But we'll talk more about polycythemia later. 
Now in polycythemia, we would have an increased hemoglobin and an increased red cell volume. Again, this is because we have more red blood cells and thus more hemoglobin being made. The plasma volume can be normal or increased. So with this, just be careful before making an anemia diagnosis and be sure to take the history and the clinical context into account. Finally, let's talk about anemia classification. Now there are many different types of anemia and many different ways of classifying anemia and things can get a little confusing. But if we classify anemia based on the red blood cell size, we can appreciate the underlying pathology. So anemia can be classified based on the MCV. Remember the MCV is the mean corpuscular volume and gives a mean quantitative value of the size of the red blood cell. So this is important. So we can have a microcytic anemia, a normocytic anemia, and a macrocytic anemia. The macrocytic anemia can be further divided based on the bone marrow morphology into megaloblastic anemia and normoblastic anemia. And we will discuss all of these anemias and the terms in the next few episodes. But just keep in the back of your mind that the easiest way and the simplest way of classifying anemia is using the MCV or the mean corpuscular volume. In the next episode, we shall discuss the microcytic anemias. Please like, subscribe and share our content with your friends and on social media pages. Our mission is to develop need to know video content and question banks that remain free for your use. We are unable to keep doing this without your support. Thank you.